Okay, so another one, gender. So this is, everyone's always interested in this. Uh, the role of women around the world. This is super fascinating because we see, see huge heterogeneity. So this is female labor force participation around the world. The colors indicate uh, differences. So red means above 70%. Uh, green is zero to 40%. So huge heterogeneity. And you might think, well, th the answer is simple about what causes this, it's income, right? So as the US developed, then you have more opportunities for women, more demand for labor, and you have higher income. That, we saw that in the US, we saw that in Canada. Uh, but if you actually you look at countries which have the highest rates of female labor force participation, countries with the lowest, they're both actually uh, developing countries. And the countries with the highest are actually, I would say, on average poorer than the countries with the lowest. Okay? So it's, I don't think it's income, and income definitely doesn't explain things. Um, and I, this is some research I've done on my own, uh, or with others. Oh, actually, and sorry, before that, these actually actual observed female labor force participation rates correlate highly with what people think is the right thing to do. Okay, so in countries where they, where women don't work, if you ask people, they say women shouldn't work. That's that's women and men. Okay, and these are just the differences. And you can see these are some of the same countries. Uh, when jobs are scarce, should have should men have more rights to a job than women? Iceland, 3.6% of people say yes, so they say no. Uh, Egypt, 95%, you can see these other countries. Okay, so it's a huge variation, actually. So it turns out, um, again, this is some research I've done with, with co-authors, that this can be explained, a big chunk of this, so maybe 30% of this, by what technologies, one that societies used uh, hundreds of years ago, even thousands of years ago, so if we go far enough back in time, or that far back in time, prior to industrialization, vast majority of people were in agriculture, okay? And there were two dominant forms of agriculture back then. One is plow agriculture, agriculture where the picture on your left is traditional plow, plowing. And here you, it, the plow is an implement. It goes through the ground continuously. It overturns the soil, kills weeds, aerates the soil. Super, super efficient. It's often pulled by an animal. but what it requires is a lot of upper body strength, okay? The other form of agriculture is called Sweden, Sweden agriculture, or slash and burn agriculture. And that's basically, you'll burn some forest um, and you'll use a hoe, right? And so that's an example here, okay? And so there are biological differences between men and women. So men tend to be stronger in, uh, in their upper body, have stronger grip strength. Uh, men do not bear children. And I think for that, because of that, ch women in most societies tend to be the ones that look after children, okay? So this, I think, illustrates it in this case that, uh, in this case, this requires a lot of upper body strength, a lot of physical strength. This type of agriculture is more compatible with childcare, okay? So it doesn't mean that women could not work in plow societies and that men could not work in here, but you did have these little differences that caused men to specialize in agriculture here and women in these types of societies, okay? And then over time, basically, that became normal, right? In societies, in our, the Western society is an example of this, or Western European societies, where women tended to work within the home and men outside the home, okay? Then over time, and in African societies or other societies, Latin American societies that used the hoe, uh, that basically women worked outside the home uh, just as much, okay? So these basically underlying technologies then caused a, a, a gender, gender division of labor, which became seen as normal. And it turns out you see that even today, even outside of agriculture. So we've moved outside of agriculture, uh, we're in manufacturing and these norms or these values uh, uh, also carry over and carry over into education. And, and so you might think what determines whether one uses the hoe or the plow? Well, it has to do with agricultural conditions and uh, also what types of crops you grow. Okay, so I won't go into that, but um, 